let us uh, start with uh, acute variceal bleed acute variceal bleed acute variceal bleed is basically a complication of complication of portal hypertension portal hypertension that is important question for exam what is the definition of portal hypertension when portal pressure is portal pressure is more than or equal to 10 to 12 millimeter of mercury because normal portal pressure is portal pressure is 5 to 8 millimeter of mercury so when portal pressure is more than 10 to 12 millimeter of mercury that is known as portal hypertension acute variceal bleed it is a emergency situation and that is very interesting question for your exam in a casualty if you are working as an intern or resident doctor any patient of acute variceal bleed presented to you with massive upper gi bleed what is the first step of management that you will do this type of question is now very very important first step of management for this patient that is very interesting first step of management is secure the airway that means we follow the rule of a b c secure the airway is the first step of management that is very very important because if you don't secure the airway by intubation or securing the airway that can lead to blood can aspirate and immediate arrest of your patient then start breathing with oxygen support third step to establish the circulation that is iv fluid that is important question for exam what is the iv fluid of choice in massive bleed that is always answer is that is ringer lactate and that is very interesting ringer lactate is the iv fluid of choice in massive bleed and what is the vein of choice that vein of choice is always preferred is that is cubital vein this type of question is now very important for your exam and what is the size of cannula that you prefer size of cannula usually we preferred that is a 16 gauze needle 16 gauze needle which is cannula that is known as gray color basically gray color code if this is not available you can use 18 gauze needle but 18 gauze is green color needle so but 16 gauze is preferred it is a wider and it is a rapid transfusion through the 16 gauze needle so it is preferred one if it is not available then you can use 18 gauze needle so in case of acute variceal bleed we manage first by the establish the airway start breathing support with the oxygen and then establish the circulation so a b c we follow and immediately injection vasopressor drugs injection vasopressor drug that is a uh, we can use injection octreotide somatostatin terlipressin glypressin but this is very important vasopressor drug of choice is injection terlipressin terlipressin is the vasopressor drug of choice we use it immediately then we put a rails tube and start cold slime lavas and slime mixed with adrenaline so cold slime lavas and it is a anti uh, it is a preventive method for again rebleed so it is a cold slime lavas which basically lead to constriction of the blood vessels so that is very important next is 
you must arrange the blood that is very important in acute varicell bleed arrange blood at least order for 10 unit of blood arrangement in case of acute varicell bleed next that gram negative septicemia chances in hepatic cell failure so injection antibiotics with gram negative coverage so this all resuscitation is basically for prepare the patient and that is very important because of this hepatic cell failure patient also associated with vitamin k abnormality because of absorption failure so you must give injection vitamin k and fresh frozen plasma infusion that immediately to start if it is available to you fresh frozen plasma which is rich of coagulant factors that can prevent the coagulation failure which causes the bleeding in case of variceal rupture so this all in acute variceal bleed we prepare the patient basically for that is very important question what is the investigation of choice in case of acute variceal bleed that is very very important question that is investigation of choice is upper GI endoscopy upper GI endoscopy because it is both diagnostic as well as therapeutic diagnostic so it can diagnose it is a variceal bleed therapeutic because at the same time you can use bending or injection sclerotherapy but this is very important question for your exam that bending is the best option bending is the best option that is very very important question because sclerotherapy can causes the toxicity of the drugs as well as anaphylactic reaction dose is also limited we can't use much drugs dose if multiple varices is present but bending we can use multi-load bend device and multiple bend all the varices we can obliterate so bending that hardly one to two step of bending can obliterate all the varices but sclerotherapy may needed multiple sittings of sclerosant application next if upper GI endoscopy and bending has been done and followed by bleeding is stopped That is very very important what you will do next that is, that is very interesting if bleeding is stopped still chances of re-bleed is 30 percent after the banding so that is very important you must do a prophylactic treatment that is prophylactic prophylactic by beta blocker and you must do regular upper GI endoscopic surveillance upper GI endoscopic surveillance it is very important to do a regular screening and during screening if any varices is developed we can do immediate banding so it is very interesting this prophylactic treatment is by the beta blocker beta blocker that is propranolol we are using and it reduces the chances of re-bleed and regular endoscopic surveillance that also we are doing in all the patient if upper GI endoscopy and banding has been done or sclerotherapy has been done but bleeding is not stopped bleeding is going on or if it is re-bleed then again in that case we can attempt repeat upper GI endoscopy and bending repeat upper GI endoscopy and bending 
but this is very interesting and very important that if bleeding is stopped again we put the patient is on beta blocker and regular endoscopic surveillance endoscopic examination but if he still bleeding is not stopped bleeding is going on then in that case if twice or repeated attempt of endoscopy failure of endoscopic treatment we can use sb mt that is known as sengstecken black more tube insertion sengstecken black more tube insertion sengstecken black more tube is not a treatment option it is basically temporary method of compressing the varices by the mechanical method by the balloon inflation just you can see that uh, recently we are using modified spmt which include this is spmt tube which having two balloon one is esophageal balloon another is gastric balloon gastric balloon capacity is 252 300 ml and most commonly most of the patient we manage by gastric balloon inflation only gastric balloon inflation very rarely required if you inflate the esophageal balloon you must measure the pressure that is 35 to 45 mm of mercury pressure that will keep and you must deflate it within 12 hour that is very important why because esophageal balloon inflation risk is there that is perforation and necrosis of the esophagus if you inflate balloon and kept it for more than 12 hour so esophageal balloon inflation very rarely required most of the patient we manage by gastric balloon inflation only Aus outside the oral cavity in sengstecken black more tube having two for the balloon inflation one is for esophageal balloon inflation another is for gastric balloon inflation and two tube is for aspiration of secretion from the esophageal lumen and gastric lumen secretion if any secretion in the esophagus chamber we can aspirate from this tube or in the gastric lumen we can aspirate from this tube and outside the oral cavity it is very interesting modified type of tennis ball is attached with that this cut end of the tennis ball is attached fixed with the outside the lip and this is very interesting this sengstecken black more tube is always inserted by the or uh, used by the expert clinician and physician and after svmt insertion before inflation before inflation of gastric balloon we must confirm it radiologically that is very important because if gastric balloon you inflate it inside the esophageal chamber what could be the complication that complication is it can lead to rupture esophagus so confirm it radiologically simply by doing x ray then inflate the gastric balloon and then slightly pull outside so that gastric balloon snugly fitted at the g junction and fix this uh, tennis ball at the outside the oral cavity with the leucoplast and strap and this is very interesting this sengstecken black more tube is temporary we have to resuscitate the patient successfully by all the method ffp blood transfusion anticoagulant and then take the patient for repeat upper gi endoscopy and bending
If repeat aparesia endoscopy and bending, bleeding is stopped, again we will put the patient is on same that is a beta blocker and regular endoscopic surveillance. But if still bleeding is going on, if still bleeding is going on, that is very very interesting and important for your exam. If still bleeding is going on, then in that case, this is very very important that this patient is regarded as repeated attempt of failure of endoscopic management. This patient has been considered for following option number one. We can use tips. We can use that Suigra operation. Next, stapler resection of distal esophagus. Next, surgical shunt. Next, orthotopic liver transplantation. So, if bleeding could not able to control by the endoscopic method, then in that case, we can consider for these following option. If question is, which one of the following is the best option for a patient of portal variceal bleed, then best option answer is always orthotopic liver transplantation because it, it not only treats the varices, but it also treat and manage the hepatic cell failure. So, it is the best option orthotopic liver transplantation. Now, question from your exam is what is emergency treatment of choice if following option is given to you acute varicell bleed is going on and not able to control by the method of endoscopic management emergency option of choice is by the tips emergency option of choice that is by the tips transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt one of the another question from your exam which one of the this is question from ems and neat examination which one of the following procedure is regarded as a vascularization surgery that means multiple vessel ligation near to the z junction that answer is swigra operation in case of swigra operation we will do doing that is basically multiple vessel ligation that is a vascularization procedure near g junction multiple vessel ligation near to the g junction that is known as suigra operation let us start with tips very very important question for your exam tips that is known as transjugular transjugular intrahepatic intrahepatic porto systemic shunt porto systemic shunt one question directly from this its name it is transjugular through the jugular vein we put the guide wire and stent that pass it is intrahepatic yes it is intrahepatic it is a porto caval or porto systemic porto caval or porto systemic shunt porto systemic shunt porto systemic shunt that is that means it is a shunt that we place between the portal vein and systemic vein that is known as portosystemic shunt. 
so that is known as tips placement now question is what are indication indication of tips that include child pug a child pug a or b with acute variceal bleed not responding with endoscopic treatment next is child pug grade of liver failure child pug criteria is for liver failure it is a, a b c child pug grade a and b waiting for hepatic transplantation and waiting time is less than 1 year because if it is a waiting time is less than 1 year then in that case interesting is tips is preferred because it not change the anatomy as well as because blockage rate of tips stent is higher so after 1 year chances of block is very high so we preferred if it is a waiting time is less than 1 year Th third indication is if it is intractable ascites intractable ascites now question from your exam that tips stent that we place ultrasound guided through the percutaneous route under local anesthesia through the transjugular that means internal jugular vein that tips stent tips stent that we are using it is polytetrafluoroethylene PTFE coated, polytetrafluoroethylene coated, that means it is covered, self expendable, metallic stent. Polytetrafluoroethylene coated, self expendable, metallic stent that is known as tips stent that we are recently using and it is very interesting if you will see through the internal jugular vein finally we reach into the either middle hepatic vein or into the right hepatic vein so we pass the guide wire through the ivc through the internal jugular vein finally reach into the IVC after crossing the SBC then right hepatic vein enter into the liver parenchyma then cannulate right branch of the portal vein then we dilate serially, serially the liver parenchyma between the right hepatic vein and right branch of portal vein then we place the stent between the right hepatic vein and right branch of portal vein so it is tips stent placement so tips stent we place between the right hepatic vein and right branch of portal vein so it is portosystemic anastomosis this stent we place inside the liver so it is intrahepatic stent placement and it is very interesting immediately because portal pressure is high so immediately blood is start shunting from the portal flow towards the systemic and variceal bleed immediately will stop so tips is very good and it is minimally invasive technique 
we can perform in emergency immediately within 10 to 15 minutes. So TIPS is a preferred option in acute varicell bleed. It is an emergency stent of or option of choice. Next is question from surgical sunt. Surgical sunt indication that include it is child pug grade, child pug liver failure grade A and B with acute variceal bleed not responding with endoscopic treatment. Next is child poop grade A and B waiting for hepatic transplantation and waiting time is more than one year. Next is intractable ascites. Intractable ascites means ascites not responding with medical management. That means diuretics, salt restriction and repeated ascitic fluid tapping. So medical management failure and still is ascites not responding that is known as intractable ascites. Next is in case of surgical shunt, we classify surgical shunt into following groups which include number one non-selective shunt non-selective shunt which include portocaval shunt portocaval shunt which can be side to side portocaval shunt which can be into side portocaval shunt side to side portocaval shunt which include this is ivc and this is portal vein so side to side portocaval shunt that is side of wall of the portal vein anastomose with the IVC. Side to side portocaval shunt is regarded as emergency surgical shunt of choice because it can perform in emergency without much dissection and mobilization. So it is regarded as emergency surgical shunt of choice. If you will see the into site. In case of into site, this is IVC, this is portal vein. Portal vein completely we proximal part of the portal vein ligated and transected. Distal part of the portal vein we anastomose with the IVC. This is splenic vein, superior mesentery vein. So, distal part we anastomose with the IVC. So, that is known as into site. In case of into site, chances of encephalopathy is highest. This is because of whole portal flow is diverted towards the systemic circulation. Second group, which is known as mesocavalcent. Mesocable shunt which include it can be a mesocable shunt side to side 
in which what we do this is ivc and this is portal portal vein is splenic vein and this is superior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric vein anastomose with the side wall of the ivc that is known as mesocaval shunt so mesocaval in case of mesocaval shunt we will do side to side Me, um, superior mesenteric vein anastomosis with the ivc another group in mesocaval shunt which is known as large diameter large diameter mesocaval shunt in case of large diameter mesocaval shunt we not anastomose ivc directly with the superior mesenteric vein but in this case what we do that this is portal vein this is splenic vein that superior mesenteric vein anastomose with the ivc by using one of the prosthetic material this is prosthetic material and diameter of the prosthetic material is more than or equal to 8 mm so this is known as large diameter mesocaval shunt when we perform anastomosis of superior mesenteric vein with ivc by using a prosthetic material size of diameter is more than 8 mm third group in this mesocaval shunt which is known as a small diameter a small diameter mesocaval shunt in which same as large diameter mesocaval shunt but in case of a small diameter mesocaval shunt diameter of the prosthetic material is less than 8 mm so in case of a small diameter little or very slow flow diverted from the portal to the systemic circulation so in few uh, many literature few literature that demonstrate a small diameter mesocaval shunt also as a partially selective shunt a small diameter mesocaval shunt also can be regarded as partially selective shunt another group which include non selective shunt which is known as proximal spleno renal shunt proximal spleno renal shunt that is very important that is important question for your exam in case of proximal spleno renal shunt if we will see that it is ivc and it is renal vein what we do we divide the splenic vein and this is the portal vein this is superior mesenteric vein and proximal part of the splenic vein is anastomose with the renal vein in case of proximal spleno renal shunt we are doing that is known as splenectomy splenectomy is required in case of proximal spleno renal shunt so uh, so that proximal part of the splenic vein directly anastomose with the renal vein so whole portal flow is diverted towards the systemic circulation and uh, this is very important this proximal spleno renal shunt is preferred for left sided portal hypertension left sided portal hypertension like massive splenomegaly which causing the portal hypertension in that case we can manage by this splenectomy along with left side spleno renal spleno renal shunt next group which is very very important that is known as 
selective shunt. Selective shunt is also known as distal splenorenal distal splenorenal shunt which is basically also known as Warren shunt. Warren shunt it is regarded as surgical shunt of choice. Because very interesting because it is a distal splenorenal shunt only it selectively decompress the esophageal varices only. So, portal flow completely not diverted towards the systemic circulation. So, chances of encephalopathy is minimum in this case. So, it is known as selective scent. If you will see the photographs, what happens just you can see it is IVC, it is renal vein, it is portal vein. What we do in this case, this is superior mesenteric vein, proximal part of the splenic vein is ligated and divided. Distal part of the splenic vein is anastomose with the renal vein. This is distal part of the splenic vein with anastomose with the renal vein. So, it is known as distal part of the splenic vein anastomosing with the renal vein. So, it is known as distal splenorenal shunt or Warren shunt. It is very interesting if you will see the tributaries of the splenic vein water tributaries that is known as short gastric vein. Short gastric vein which communicate with the esophageal varices area. So, blood it is very interesting that if you will see that blood is diverted from the esophageal varices area through the short gastric vein, splenic vein finally reach into the renal vein. So, whole of the esophageal varices which is torch was dilated all the varices decompress and they diverted the blood from the varices area only towards the systemic circulation. So, it is a selective surgical sun and chances of encephalopathy is minimum in this case. So, this is regarded as surgical sun of choice. Okay, thank you.